Hey everyone, Jason here with Phase Shift Games, and we are now at the third and final in a series of videos for Drop Drive. This is the all-important playthrough video, or how-to-play video. Uh, we did, um, we first did a prototype unboxing, uh, then we did a how to set up the game using the prototype, and then this is going to be taking that prototype and doing a full how to play a game of Drop Drive. <clears throat> Uh, so this is the prototype. This is the very uh, set of components that we're sending out to all of our previewers and some other folks. Uh, so you are seeing literally the latest and greatest as of today, about a month before we launch our Kickstarter campaign or two months. Uh, and uh, it's very exciting. It's so awesome to be at this stage, to have such an awesome looking prototype, which I hope you'll agree with as soon as you see it in action. So let's get to it. I'm going to flip the camera here. All right. So now a couple quick notes. First off, the box does not go in the center of the table. The sun does. Put the box up there for now. So when I did the uh, the how to set up the game video, one thing that I forgot right at the end, I explained that we have these market demand tokens here, which get put on the planets as players land on the planets. What I didn't explain is that in game setup, you actually have to remove some of those market demand tokens based on the number of players in the game. So we're going to do a, a mock two player game here. So I have nine of the market demand tokens. The other nine are off to the side. Um, this is important because that is actually the direct trigger for the game end. And you'll see that as we proceed through the game. The other note I want to give you up front is that this is a squashed play area. And that is directly due to the fact that I have limited camera space. Uh, I wanted the camera to be close enough to the table so you can see the stuff. But it meant that I had to collapse space a little bit. It, it, it was supposed to be a larger hexagon. Here it's more of like a pentagon, I guess. And it's a little squashed. So anyway, um, to make up for that, I removed a couple asteroids and a fuel uh, canister and a salvage. I just removed them just to make space feel like it's just about as populated as it would be in a larger game with the larger play surface. Anyway, that's it. With that said, we're going to get started playing Drop Drive. <clears throat> All right, so I've got two players set up. I've got Team Green here and I've got Team Blue. I shouldn't say team because this is not a team game. <laughs> We've got the green player, We've got the blue player. The green player has uh, already got a ship called the Guild Thirsty Destiny. And then over here, the blue player is the Lone Leviathan. Uh, the reason that the green player has that extra card in the middle, uh, this was one of the three cards that they drew at the uh, during the setup. You're, you're handed three explore cards, and you get to choose two to keep. So this player chose to keep this ship upgrade, which gets put right onto their ship. And they also kept a specimen. The blue player kept a specimen and a passenger. So you're, you're going to see how each of those work as we go through the how to play. All right, so let's get started with the game. The way this begins is each player is, this is kind of like the pre-turn before you start taking your actual turns. Uh, each player is going to drop their rocket ship, their spaceship, into the solar system. And they can do that anywhere they want. What they do is look at their ship front card and they look for their drop drive rating. So the green player has a drop drive rating of four. And what that means is their nav tool currently has four links to represent the length of four. They can place this vertically anywhere they want in the solar system and drop the rocket from that height. And so the higher your drop drive rating, the more uh, volatile your drop is going to be. You're going to scatter uh, a little further than maybe you want to. So what is this player going to be going for? They have four cargo spaces. They got a really good explore rating. They got an explore of three. Um, they have a, uh, a specimen already, and maybe they want to find other specimens that match with it. Um, and then what's this ship upgrade? So this, this ship has uh, the Thirsty Water Extractor, plus two credits for each blue asteroid sold. So they might want to start looking at blue asteroids, which are, there's a couple there, there's a couple scattered around. And blue asteroids are going to sell for the most at the pink planet, which is up here. The planet is called Range. It's the Duster's homeworld. And you can sell blue asteroids there currently for four credits apiece. So um, 
Let's go for some blue asteroids and then try to make his way up to the pink planet, which is way over here. Uh, so he's going to drop in over here, collect some stuff, and then later on he'll drop again. All right, so the beginning of the, the game again, all you're doing is dropping your ship into space. And that's pretty much right where I wanted to land. That's good. So that is that. That's just the pre-turn. That's all they do. Now the blue player does the same thing. The blue player has a drop of seven. So this ship is nowhere near as precise in their drop. Uh, so here's the nav tool of seven links. Uh, this player is, what are they gonna go for? So they're really good at uh, battling pirates. They have a plus two to their battle roll, whereas the other ship only has a negative one. Uh, so they're actually too peaceful. They, they don't wanna battle pirates at all. Uh, but the blue player might start uh, might want to land on a planet, trigger some pirates, and you'll see as we go uh, how they're going to start attacking pirates. In the meantime, they also want to gobble up some good treasure. So let's go up this way. And we drop from a height of seven, and there we go. All right, that is it. Now we start the actual turn. So in turn order, we're just going back and forth, back and forth, until this pile of market demand tokens is depleted. That's it. The turns are simple. On your turn, you're going to use your rocket drive, which is on the ship back card. It's this, uh, this, this rating right here. So this one has a rocket drive of five, and the other player has a rocket drive also of five. You're going to use your rocket drive to maneuver around wherever you want, and then you may use your drop drive if you have fuel or if it's charged. Now, at the beginning of the game, everyone's drop drive is charged. So everyone could drop once. Now, the initial pre-turn doesn't count as using their drop drive. So you don't have to worry about depleting your drop drive yet. Uh, so that's it. Your turn is simple. You use your rocket drive. Now, when you are rocket driving around, you're going to pick up stuff. You might land on a planet. You might encounter a pirate. And all those things work as you're about to see. So let's go to our green player we have a rocket drive of five so i'm gonna snap in the fifth piece to his nav tool there so we got five and the green player is right here the green player if you remember when it wanted to pick up blue gems so we are going to we can easily suck up those two right there what does he have uh four cargo spaces so he could make his way pick up a green and then this other blue down here it won't do it all in one turn but that might be what one of his strategies will be now if i look at the pink planet i can't sell green asteroids at the pink planet only blue white and yellow so the green asteroid could just take up space um but it may be something that i sell later on so these are some of the choices you're going to have let's pick up these two blue gems and then uh, or crystals and then let's go pick up the space salvage so that you can see how that works as well so we're going to manipulate this tool and bend it so that i am going to specifically move through that asteroid then that, that asteroid then the space salvage and finally to the other end closer towards that other blue that i want to pick up later i pick up the two blue asteroids i pick up the space salvage I put them right into the cargo spaces on my ship. And that is it for my turn. I use my rocket drive. I can use my drop drive either before or after my rocket drive if I want. Uh, in this case, I don't want to. I still want to get that last blue gem, uh, crystal, uh, before I leave this area of space. So green player is done. Blue player, what are you going to do? You also have a string uh, a rocket drive of five. One, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna take apart his nav tool so that we have um, five there. <clears throat> and let's see, this player, you know what? This player really wants to trigger some pirates because that is, is something that this player is really good at is battling pirates. So the way you do that is landing on planets. So I think faster than anything else, this player is going to just try to gobble up anything that they can sell at the closest planet, which is the pink planet. Uh, what does the pink planet want again? Blue, white, and yellow. So, the okay, this is nice. So this player <clears throat> is going to run into that fuel canister 
and then pick up that yellow crystal and land on the other side closer towards the pink planet. All right, so we take a fuel can canister and a yellow asteroid. We put them into our cargo hold. And it is back to the green player. You're going to start seeing that this goes pretty quick. <clears throat> so green player wants to pick up that blue asteroid. And that will fill up their cargo hold. One, two, three, four spaces. That's it. So we are going to run into the blue asteroid. Pick it up. I don't even need to continue flying. I could continue on the path, but it doesn't matter because I got what I need. And at this point, I'm going to use my drop drive. So I'm going to spend my drop drive token. I flip it to the depleted side and I'm going to drop as close to that pink planet as I can. My drop drive rating is four. So I take off one of my nav pieces, I pick up my ship and I'm going to come way over here and try to drop as close to the pink planet as possible. Now I bounce a little far away, but I might still be able to make it there on my next turn. But you're going to see something interesting because I think the blue player is going to make it there before the green player, which is going to mess up the green player's plans a little bit. All right, back over to blue. <clears throat> blue is, as I said, just was picking up some quick asteroids and then trying to land. So let's do that. Blue can pick up that pink asteroid right there and then land at the pink planet. No problem. So <clears throat> I pick up the pink asteroid. I put it in my hold and I have landed. I put my rocket either adjacent to the planet or on top of the planet. All right, so landing on a planet is what happens. I'm gonna pick this up so you can see it closer. This is the pink planet that I've just landed on with the blue player. Now you go in order, the, the pirate's here, he's gonna stay there for a second. You go in order along the top and then you do the market and then you go in order on the bottom. So at the top, the first thing is recharge your drop drive. If you had any depleted tokens, flip them to the charged side. Step two, deliver any passengers that want to get to this planet. Now, this player does have a passenger, but this passenger wants to go to the green or the yellow planet. So this is not eligible, so the passenger is gonna stay on the ship. Step three is identify salvage. If I had any space salvage in my cargo, I could identify it. I don't have any, so I'm not going to talk about that yet. And now we get to the market spaces. All right, what do I have? I have a yellow and a pink asteroid. Now this planet does not want uh, pink at all, <clears throat> and they will give two credits for yellow asteroids currently. So this player says, sure, I'll sell that yellow asteroid. I'll get my two space bucks. So. Here's my two space bucks. That goes to my private pile. I put it face down next to my ship. And now this yellow asteroid gets dropped over the sun. So anytime you sell stuff, it goes right back into the system, gets randomized and put in different areas. Now I sold yellow asteroids. So I take a market demand token and I put it on the leftmost spot of that color asteroid. What that's doing is it's blocking that spot. And so if the next number to the right was a different number, that's how much these asteroids would sell at this planet from that point forward until someone else sells. And then you put another market token. In this case, it's still two. So it hasn't really changed up or down, but it does block off one of the spaces. If another player sells another uh, yellow asteroid <clears throat> to this planet, this planet will never take yellow asteroids again. <clears throat> All right, so that's the market phase. Now, explore surface. So I'm going to put this back down for a second. What the explore surface means is I look at my card, my ship card. Take my ship back. I'm going to move the cargo for a second. And I see I have an explore rating of one on this ship. And so what that means is I draw one card from the Explore deck and I can keep one card from the Explore deck. If I had an Explore rating of two, I could draw two cards. I still only keep one, but I have more choices to choose from. So in this case, I got the Roving Ship Upgrade, which gives me another Specimen Canister. So I separate my ship front and back. I put that right in between. And now I can have one, two, three, four, five specimens on this ship. 
So that suddenly became an interesting possible strategy for this player because the specimens have this exponential effect. The more you have, the more they compound. And that gives me an interesting edge there if I start going for specimens. Okay, and then the last thing you do on the planet is if there's a pirate ship on it, which there is, you drop the pirate ship into the system. Now I'm gonna redrop that because uh, it should bounce off of the sun. Uh, but there's that pink pirate. And then you activate all pirates that are in space. So if there's a pirate on the planet, you launch it. And then you activate all pirates that are in space. And activating the pirates is, it's written right on the planet card there. In this case, this pirate moves to and steals the closest pink asteroid. So what happens is this pirate is going to move to the closest pink asteroid, which is right here. He picks it up and he puts it on that planet card. There's a little section at the bottom called Bounty. That's the pirate's bounty area. Uh, so he's now holding one pink crystal. Uh, and if any player goes and attacks and defeats that pirate, they will get everything on the bounty. All right. That is it for the planet landing. That was a little bit more explanation, but you'll see in a moment that it just goes pretty quick once you get used to it. All right. So blue player is done. Now the blue player actually could still drop drive because he still has the drop drive token and he has a fuel, which means he could drop twice, essentially. Um, he does want to go and start attacking pirates, but that pirate may move before his next turn, so now's not the time for him to spend his drop drive. Let's move on to the green player. All right, <clears throat> the green player really wanted to land on that planet before the blue player because the green player wanted to sell all these blue asteroids for the highest market amount. Now, in this case, that's fine because the pink, uh, the other player did not sell uh, blue asteroids, so it didn't affect the market. Uh, but that could have been an issue if the other player was selling the same kind of asteroids that I am. So let's get going with our rocket drive. We have a rocket drive of five, <clears throat> and we can easily make it to the planet. Now, just because one player is already at the planet does not mean that I can't land. I can still orbit the planet just fine, either going on top or adjacent to the planet. And I now land as the green player. And so right back at the top, re uh, recharge, drop drive. I did use my drop drive, so I flip it back to the charge side. Step two, deliver passengers. I don't have any. Step three, identify salvage. Now salvage is really simple. For each salvage that you have, and you identify, you're simply going to draw and keep one explore card. What do we get? We got a, a another specimen. This is predatory. This specimen likes other specimens that are between 11 and 20 gravitrons, which is the weight unit. That's how heavy they are. So this one counts as um, in that range, 11 to 20. And so this one scores two for itself and then any other specimens that are the same weight category would also score two. In this case, my other specimen is lighter, eight Gravitron. So this one doesn't combo exactly, but this one that I already had likes other specimens that have two or less limbs, which it has two or less limbs, and this one also has two or less limbs. So this one is comboing with this one, but not the other way around, and that's okay. You're going to see as we go that there's all different types of combo effects that will happen. All right. And then the salvage gets dropped back in the system. Now, one note, as I'm dropping things, uh, I wish that the prototypes had the three-dimensional sun that we're going to have in the final game. The sun is actually going to have a spherical um, angle to it. Uh, that will mean that anytime you drop something, it really gets scattered around the system in a, in a better way than the flat one does here. Because right here, you know, sometimes they just don't go uh, very far. So keep that in mind as you're watching. Uh, okay, so we had landed on the planet. We identified salvage. Mark it. Now, I have three blue crystals. I'm going to sell all those blue crystals to this pink planet. And they're going to get me four each. That is four, eight, 12 credits that I'm getting. So here's a 10 and one and one. I'm going to get those 
12 credits and put them face down next to my ship. I drop the blues back in the system. And I cover on the market space the first blue spot. Now you notice I sold three blue asteroids, but I did not cover three spaces on the blue track. If you sell any number of a color, you block only one of that color's track. Uh, and that's just how the market works. So now the next time a player goes to the pink planet, if they sell a blue and two yellow, they're gonna put a market demand token on the next blue space and one on the next yellow space. That's how that works. Then we explore. Now this player has an explore rating of three. So one, two, three cards that I draw and I can choose to keep one of these. Now this is interesting. I just drew two more specimens I've already got two, so I'm kind of being fed these specimens uh, in a convenient way. Uh, so let's see what these are and let's see if they synergize. This one is symbiotic, which means for every, um, uh, for every different color that I have of a specimen, I'm getting two credits. So this one is pink, I have a green one and a white one. So that's already three. So this one's worth two, four, six credits already. And it'll just get more if I get more different colors. So that's not bad. And then this green one is parasitic, likes to have very lightweight specimens, ones that are one to 10 Gravitrons. Well, one of mine is lightweight and then he's lightweight as well. So that combos as well. Those are both good. Let's look at the third card that I got. This is a passenger. And this passenger wants to go to the pink and the green planet, pink or green, I can choose. And if I drop him off, at the pink or green planet, I'll get three credits and take the, the top specimen from the discard pile. If there's any specimens in the discard pile, I would just get the top one for free. And there's about to be, because I have to discard some of these. So all of these are really good. Um, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to take this specimen that was symbiotic, that likes all the different color specimens. I think that's a good combo effect. So I'm going to put that on my ship and I discard the other cards. That was exploring and then back to pirates. Now, the pirate is not on the planet. He's already in space, but all pirates in space now activate. So once again, this one is gonna move to the nearest pink asteroid, which is here and steal it and put it on the bounty. Now he's got two asteroids on his bounty. If anyone defeats that pirate, they immediately collect both of those asteroids. There's a limited number of spaces uh, for each of these pirates, and it, the number is three. Uh, so the max that, some, that a pirate can have on it is three of these components. All right, and then it is back to the blue player. I'm just gonna go another turn or two and then talk about the end game. Uh, and we'll see, we'll, we'll, we'll show you a pirate battle because that hasn't happened yet. So blue player wants to go and attack the pirate. Why? Because he's just really good at it. <laughs> and the pirate has two pink asteroids and I already have one pink asteroid so that would mean that I'm set up well to go to the white planet which is down here oh really close to the pirate in fact and I can get five credits a piece for each of those pink gems at that planet so let's start going on some piratey hunting goodness blue player is going to flip his drop drive token now his drop drive isn't too good remember it's a seven so it's pretty imprecise, but he is going to try to get as close to that pirate as possible. Let's see how far I bounce. Not too bad, not too bad. Now I dropped, uh, I can immediately use my rocket drive, which is five, and that is plenty to get to the pirate. And then I'm just going to bend the other side back towards the, whoops, back towards the white planet because that is where I want to go afterwards. So I pick up my ship and place it on the other side and I have passed through the pirate and so now I'm immediately going to fight the pirate. I roll my battle die and I add my bonus which is plus two. I have a total of five. The other player rolls for the pirate. Now there's no bonus just a flat die roll and that was a four. So the pirate got a four and I got my three plus two is five. I have beat the pirate because I have a greater number 
you needed to beat the pirate's number, not tie. You need to get more. And so I have defeated the pirate. Pirate comes off of the table, goes back to the planet, and I collect the entire bounty of two crystals. And they go straight into my cargo hold. And now I'm set up super well to land next turn on the white planet, sell those at five apiece. I'm going to get 15 credits just for those. And of course, when I land on the white planet, not only am I doing that, but I'm exploring. I'm going to trigger the white pirate to go into space, and it just continues all those great, cool things. In fact, I'll probably also, if we were to proceed, I would also pick up the salvage on the way and maybe pick up the yellow crystal and see what else I could uh I could accomplish on my turn. I could certainly pick up the salvage because I have a big cargo hold. I have five cargo spaces. Uh, so I'm using four of them right now. Oh, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six cargo spaces on this ship. So I really <laughs> should be trying to fill up my cargo hold with as much stuff as possible. Okay, so play would continue back and forth, back and forth. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff that's happening. Moving around, picking up these, these different components in space. Oh, I didn't explain how fuel works, so let me do that really quick. It's really simple. Uh, so the blue player, let's say that right now, for whatever reason, the blue player really wanted to get right here. Uh, even though I've already moved, I battled a pirate, I can always drop drive. That's a free action if you have a charge or you have fuel. So what happens, I've already use my drop drive it's it's exhausted but i have a fuel so i can pick up the fuel redrop it over the sun and immediately replenish my drop drive it's that simple and now that it's replenished i can choose to use it and drop somewhere else in space as i desire uh, so that is how fuel works um so we would continue back and forth um you're going to be really figuring out how you want to build out your ship uh oh i did not do this, so because um, I'm going fast here for the video, but um, when I sold as the green player, when I sold those three blue asteroids to the pink planet, one of the reasons I wanted to do that was because I had this ship upgrade, which says plus two credits for each blue asteroid sold. So really, I should have six more credits, two, four, six, for each of those three. So I'm going to take six more credits and put that on my ship that would have come at the same time that I sold those. So you're trying to figure out how you're using your ship abilities, um, your specimens, you're already seeing how those can start to combo. Uh, oh, passengers, um, let, me, let me do one more thing so that you can see passengers, and that will be going to the green planet. So I'm gonna show you one more thing. I used my fuel as the blue player. Now let's flip his drop drive and we are going to drop him somewhere over next to the green planet. Boom! Wow! <laughs> he flew far away. Um, on his next turn, I'm going to kind of fast forward a little bit. Let's say that he is going to try to make his way to the green planet and just barely makes it. Now, take a look. You'll notice that the navigation tool doesn't quite touch the planet but you got to take into account that the rocket itself takes up some space. So the rocket is physically touching the planet. That's good enough in this game. You're touching the planet. You can land on the planet. <clears throat> so now that I've landed on the green planet, I have this passenger that wanted to go to either green or yellow. And this is an asteroid dealer. And it says plus two credits for each asteroid that you sell. Doesn't matter what color, just plus two credits for each asteroid. So I deliver him, he's going to, or her, uh, she's going to go to the discard pile. And now whatever asteroids I sell, I'm gonna get those extra points. Well, I've got three pink. Pink sell at the green planet for four each, plus my two additional, so they actually sell for six each. So that's 18 for those three. Drop them in. I'm gonna take my 18 space bucks. I don't know if that's what we're calling them. I just like to call them space bucks for now. Uh, and then I would, of course, proceed with my Explorer. Uh, if I had Salvage, uh, this is the Green Pirate. I would launch the Green Pirate into space, and so on. Now, at some point, I just sold green, so I put another market demand token on the pink spot there. Now, at some point, this 
selection of um, or this pile of market demand tokens is going to be depleted. So let's say that we're going and people have been landing on all these different planets selling asteroids and now the last one was just placed on alpha. That player finishes their turn and at that point the game immediately ends. So let's say that that happened right now. Someone just placed, um, let's say it was the blue player over here at alpha, just placed that last market demand token. Now the game immediately ends. <clears throat> Any player that is still in space immediately emergency lands on the closest planet. So the green player here checks and the closest planet is pink. So the green player emergency lands on the pink planet and if they have any passengers that they can deliver there, they can do that. They can uh, sell asteroids. They can identify salvage. They can do everything at the planet except the things on the bottom, which are the exploring and the pirate stuff. You ignore the pirates and you do not explore the surface. You don't have time. Basically, you emergency landed. You can do your market stuff and then the game is over. Every player can do that. That just gives them one last chance to sell off anything that they were holding on their ship. And with that, the game ends and we count our score. So let's look. Score is really simple. We have our space bucks. You're going to flip those over and count all of those. And then you have specimens. And that really is it. So the Green player has 15, 16, 17, 18 space bucks. Of course, I'd have a much bigger amount if we played a full game. Uh, the blue player has 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 space bucks, but specimens. The blue player never really got anything other than Arctic, and the Arctic specimen says for each white um, specimen, which comes from the, the Yeshin's homeworld, gets three credits. So. He gets three credits for this one specimen, but he doesn't have any more to combo with. So just the three credits. And then over here, we have three specimens and they all kind of combo together. So we, it doesn't matter what order you go in, we'll go with this one first. For each different color, score two credits. Well, there's three different colors, so that's six credits right there, six. Then for this one, for each specimen that's between 11 and 20 Gravitrons, get two. So this one is over 10 and that's it. The other two are lighter. So this one just gets two for himself and that's it, two. And lastly, this one wanted specimens that have two or less limbs. So two for each of those, two for himself, two for the predatory that has two limbs and two for the symbiotic that only has one limb so that's another two four six credits you can see how the specimens really start to build up if you get ones that combo well with one another after all is said and done blue player i think you were defeated 10 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 to 32 <laughs> nope 35 37 39, 41, 42 points. Of course, I did not play even remotely a full game, and I didn't exactly use perfect strategy all along. But that is the gist of Drop Drive. Let me think really quick if I missed anything. I don't think I did. We got pirates. We got passengers, upgrades, specimens. We got exploring, Drop Drive tokens, refreshing, fuel, space salvage pirate movement oh uh so this is something that i will explain now on the flip side of each of the planets is an alternate version of the planet <clears throat> so you saw the pink pirate flying around in space picking up pink asteroids now we we purposely kept the home world side of the planets really simple. So all the pirates on the home worlds do the same thing. The green pirate flies to the nearest green asteroid and collects it. And the blue pirate picks up blue asteroids and so on. So the home worlds are all, the pirates all behave the same. 
But if you flip these over, so here's the green planet. Now you'll notice that the markets um, also all have three different asteroid colors that they're gonna purchase. On the flip side, some of these planets lose one of the market spaces and some of the numbers are different and the pirates all behave differently. So now the green pirate is now a junk jester. He moves to and steals the nearest salvage. So he's gonna pick up these I-beams, these salvage uh, items and collect those. The pink pirate uh, is going to totally different. This is the Dread Duke. He's going to move to and battle with the nearest player. So the, the, where is he? The pink pirate is going to move to and start battling with the closest player that's in space and not landed on a planet. So he moves to blue. He battles with blue. He gets a bonus against blue. Of course, the blue player also had a bonus, but <clears throat> the pirate gets an additional bonus. And if the pirate wins, then the blue player has to redrop himself over the sun, which might mess up all of his plans that, you know, he was planning to go somewhere and now he's in a totally different area of space. And he will get three credits from the bank and put them onto the planet card, which means that he's essentially building up money, like actual bounty. And if you went and finally defeated the pink pirate, you would get all the credits that's on the pink pirate. And so on. There are five different ones. They all work a little different. Uh, the Paradox pile here, the Yellow Pirate, is going to actually take cards from the discard pile. And he's going to stack up cards. So he might have passengers that he's like, you know, holding hostage. He, he might have specimens in cages, things like that. Uh, the White Pirate is going to pick up fuel canisters and hoard those. And the blue one is going to move to and steal whatever asteroid is closest to the sun. So he's gonna get all different colors. He's gonna move around and get all these asteroids that are close to the sun, whatever color they may be. So the way it works is for your first game or two, we recommend playing with the home world side, but then after you've played uh, once or twice, you can flip over any number to the other side. We might suggest flipping three of them to the advanced side uh, and then keep the other two as home world side, doesn't matter. Okay, I think we have covered everything. Uh, oh, there is one last thing. <clears throat> it is not in the prototype at all yet, but there will be these things called anomalies. And let's presume for the moment that there is some other component in space. I don't know what it is yet, but there'll be some component somewhere in space and they might even be purposely placed at the outskirts. But these are like anomalies or signals that your ship can go and investigate. And if you go to one of these anomaly spaces and investigate it, and there's only going to be a finite number, because once you investigate, that component comes out of the game. There's only going to be like maybe one to three of these in an entire game. And if you go and investigate, there's going to be a separate deck of cards that are going to be made up of things that we build, but also things that the community builds. Community-driven content for things that are outlandishly wild and crazy things that totally mess with the game uh and so this might be um uh let's see it might be <clears throat> the one that we have in shipping shenanigans uh, many of you saw and supported our fundraiser campaign well in the fundraiser campaign we decided to put in an anomaly for drop drive and one of those anomalies is called the wreck of the everstar so it's this giant freighter holding cargo containers that, that flies into an, and collides with an asteroid. And so what's going to happen is there's going to be somewhere on the board where there's now represent, representation of this freighter that's collided with an asteroid. And there's going to be cargo containers like cubes or something. Maybe it's, it's something like these market cubes. And you're going to drop them around where that collision happened. And now there's all these new things in space that I can interact with. Maybe I can collect them and deliver them back to the shipping hub and get some money. Or maybe I can collect them and then go sell them to pirates and, and get, you know, whatever's on their ship or something. Some of these things we, you know, we're going to work with the community to figure out how these things should actually behave. But they can do wild and crazy things. One of them might say flip over the sun. It's now a black hole and it works differently. One of them might put wormholes from there to there, and now ships can fly in and come out of another wormhole. 
we have so many ideas of our own we're gonna want to pull in traditional sci science fiction uh, universes and tropes that are out there um, you know there could be time travel there can be wormholes there can be giant uh, floating octopuses in space you know there's so many possibilities um, that that we see coming into play with these anomalies so those are gonna be so much fun and really shake up every game because if you imagine that there could be a stack of um, any number of these anomalies in this deck and every time you go to one of these spots you're only drawing one and that's just going to shake up that game and so maybe throughout a game you actually will search or explore two of these anomalies so you might get two of them that come out but out of a stack of a dozen or more you can imagine how every game will be materially different and have a really different feel uh, based on what kinds of things come out so stupidly exciting stuff coming that'll all uh, start to unveil more during our kickstarter campaign uh, but at this point i'm gonna sign off for tonight and say thank you so much for watching i hope you like what you've seen this is so exciting uh can't wait for you all to start being able to play with it and get your hands on and explore this universe with us together thanks so much jason from face shift games signing off have a good night bye bye